In this video guys, I'm going to show you how you can build a simple piece of equipment to help you sort your Doobia roaches a lot easier. So you may remember not long ago, I did a video that's shown you guys how you can make £2,500 from breeding just 50 Doobia roaches. I'll link that video just there if you want to take a look at it. But that got my mind working, that got my cogs twisting a little bit and made me think, well why can't I do this a bit more bigger scale? I did only have 50 roaches. So that's what I've done. I've slowly started to add more dubia roaches into my colony, which is now there. I've made more space for the babies there, there, and there. And I need to figure a way of sorting out the babies from the adults. That's what this video is about. I'm gonna show you how to build the civil equipment to be able to do that perfectly. So what are you gonna to need to do this? First off, a couple of buckets. Now, if you're from the UK, I went to Home and Bargains just a cheap little shop we've got in the UK. One of these buckets was 89 pence. Bargain. You need a drill or something where you can put holes in the bottom of the box. Me personally, I started off with a three mil hole and now this is a 10 mil drill bit. I first drilled loads of holes in the bottom with the three mil so I've got a good guide for the bigger holes. It's a 10 mil hole, it should do the job perfectly fine. Some people say you can use eighth of an inch, 10 mil, I'm going to try that to start with and what you basically do is keep drilling a load of the bigger holes in the bottom totally fill the bottom of the bucket with those size holes pour your doobia roaches into that bucket put that bucket into this one with no holes just like that give it a shake and in theory all the babies will fall through the holes or crawl through the holes into the bottom one and that separates out the baby doobia roaches which will be in that bucket from the adults which will be in that bucket it also helps you out telling you how many babies you've got are you producing the right amount can you do anything to produce more all that sort of stuff it just gives you a good guide stay tuned to the end to see if i've actually produced any babies if i want to separate the mediums from the adults then all i'll do is get another bucket and put slightly bigger holes in does it make sense to you let's keep drilling this one and actually see if it works halfway through it's taking a while but slow and steady because you don't want to break the bucket and there we go all the holes there are done. I've still got the middle to do, but you get the gist. I have to clean up some of the holes because there's bears and stuff like that, but that's the general gist. So one of the problems that I have just found is, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a lot of burrs. Like all these little bits of plastic that are just sticking up, they're gonna get in the way. The doobie roaches can catch onto them, hold on, and it just won't work as well. That is where we have to take out a bit of creativity. The Peter Webster knife, right? So I'm gonna use this blade, which is literally just a fold away blade, and I'm gonna use this to uh, scrape the burrs off, and hopefully it's gonna be a tedious job. It really is gonna be a tedious job, but it will save me a lot of hassle in the long run. That's what I'm gonna do now. And then I'm left with this. It's just a bucket with a ton of holes in the bottom. Shall we go and pour some dubia roaches in and just see if it works? I'm hoping the adults stay in the top and the babies go through the bottom. So this here is my main dubia colony. There's not too many in there, but there's enough to warrant a good little clean out. So that's what I'm gonna do. All I've gotta do is take the food out. If you wanna learn how to make my roach chow, I'll stick a card just there, check it out. We'll put that up there. I've gotta get all of the egg crate that's inside, shake all the roaches off into the bottom, and then tip all the roaches into this bucket. and start that. Whoa, yeah, guys, check it out. How amazing is that? And it's just a case of bang them down, bang them down. Jesus Christ, come and have a look at this, guys. Amazing. Check out that white one just there. And it's about to go, there we go. Absolutely amazing. So this is just it, I just keep doing this until Oopsie daisy, until 
all the roaches are off the cardboard. One thing I have just found out, if I just put them like that, the no holes in that one, and then the one with the holes, then they, the roaches haven't got a lot of room to move around in the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, get a piece of wood, straight in the bottom there, drop that on the top there, and then it just gives that extra bit of space underneath for the roaches to go into, and they can actually pile up, because these aren't really that big buckets. Let's put the roaches in right now, and just see what happens, you never know. It might just totally fail. Here we go. Oh no, I can, I can put them all in. And a few of the babies out the back that are left in the box. And zip them in, just like that. And that's it. That's all the roaches in there. All the frazz, all the dirt. I suppose just give it a shake. See what happens. I'll get the handle over there because all the frazz will go in the bottom, all the babies will go in the bottom. You just see how it goes. You can see some white roaches in there as well. That's the freshly molted roaches. There's some big bits of like card and stuff in there. Get them out as and when you can see them. Just like that. Because you don't want them to block the holes up in the bottom, do you? Just every now and then, give it a shake. Stick it back down and just wait for all the babies to go down the bottom and through the holes. So while that is actually still sorting out, I've still got some babies running through, I'm actually gonna make up a couple of more of these little tubs. These tubs with a little opening there, it's just what I store the dry food and the um, wet food in. Now these ones are out of the main colony, but I've now got a baby colony. So I need to make two more, one for the dry food, one for the moist food. And the way I do it is I've just got these little tubs and I basically just run a knife, either stab it in and run it straight up, just cut a hole out of one side, no lid, no nothing like that, and just put the dry food, the roach chow in one side and the moist in the other. And I just stick that on the cool side of the actual rope, the doobie roach colony. And it just works, it's always worked for me, so it should work with this one as well. Top tip, sliced carrots from Asda, 45p, or go after eight o'clock at night and then reduce it down to 19p. Boof. Again, while that's sorting out, we can start building up the new colony for these babies. Now, I've got it set on top of Diego's enclosure where my old colony used to be. Reason why is this side of that enclosure, directly there, that is where Diego, my bearded dragon's hotspot is. And when his heat bulb's actually on, this temperature gets to 90 degrees on top of his enclosure, which is the perfect temperature to stick my Divya roaches on. So I'll just level that up. So this side's the hot side, that side's the cold side. For his dry food, I'm just gonna use my own roach shell. I'm gonna stick quite a bit in there, simply because these are babies and they do eat quite a bit more, I think. <laughs> Drop that in one corner. Next side, the carrots. Pour them into the actual little pot. Again, they've just been through quite a bit of stress. They might need a bit of rehydration. So I'm gonna stick quite a few in there. The other corner, I've opened up the slot that they can get into those cups quite wide, just because there's quite a few that are gonna be getting in. Now, for the egg crates, top tip, I went to a local cafe that's got a lot of traffic, a lot of people going in and out of that cafe. And I said, have you got any of the egg crates? They said, yeah, we've got loads. Come back at the end of the day and we'll give you as many as you want. Bonus, and now, if you lay these flat, which is something I've only recently learned actually, if you lay these flat in the enclosure, all the poop builds up inside here and it's not very good for your animal. So if you leave, stick them vertically, the poop will all just fall out, go on the floor. The babies can live in the poop quite nicely, which has got good microbiotics inside it for the babies. And it's just a bit healthier. There's actually a baby there. Right. So I'm just gonna stick them slightly diagonal. You, you don't wanna put them too close together like that either because all their gases can build up inside there and kill them off. So I stick them, like see how it's got the gap between each one and they just go in, 
sort of on a slight diagonal slant. Let's put some babies in. Time for the adults to go back into their enclosure. Give it a bit of a shake off just to check. Check all around the holes at the bottom. There's only a few babies left on the bottom. And then get the bucket. This should be just adults. Few left. Boom. We're gonna let them sink into their enclosure. Look how many there is. Let's move the babies into theirs. For the babies, I'm gonna keep a lot of the fraz in with them because as I've said, the uh, fraz does have a lot of microbiotics inside it. Here's that piece of wood that I had inside it. So it has worked, all the babies are coming out. I'll just gently flick these out because these are a little bit more delicate than the actual adults. And just get all the babies off this so I can reuse this piece of wood then. And yep, all the babies are off that. As you can see, if I can get some light, Look at all the babies that are in there. So it has separated them out quite nice. It seems to have the sort of newborn babies and the next two molts up within it. Like I say, I'm gonna keep all the fraz in it. I'm gonna drop them just here and perfect. And we've just got to, I'll drop some of that fraz down the bottom so it's not all mixed in and I'll let them find their own home within that colony. Let them find their space, their food, which is all the way down on the cold side, and I'm gonna put this back, and that is that. The leopard geckos are obviously uh, just seeing me. There's Donna looking at me, and Millie sticking her head out the hide there. So that is that. I think it works really well. A couple of things I will want to change, and I am going to change, is Obviously, I've got the big holes where the babies go through. That's absolutely perfect. Now, you can do a bucket on top of that with even bigger holes, so the medium size, and the, the adults will get stuck in there, the medium will get stuck in there, and then the babies underneath. Me, personally, I'm happy with just doing the babies. So it goes like the bait there, like that. Now, if I, in this bucket where there's no holes, if I stick a ton of tiny holes, two mil holes, then all of the fraz and all the junk and the dirt That'll go into a separate bucket, so I'll be left with babe. I'll be left with adults and mediums, babies, and then just the dirt and the frazz and stuff like that. That'll be a good idea to keep it clean. But for a first attempt, I'm absolutely loving it. I hope you guys have found loads of support, and loads of value out of this. I know I have. If you guys know of any other little tricks and tips that I could do to help increase my productivity, I'd love to test those products out. I'd love to test those theories out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're not already please hit that subscribe button.